All right, so the project for today is building one of these three-point hitch um, trailer receivers. Um, so here's a good point, like this guy right here. Um, most of them are like this that I see where they come with the Reese receiver. But I don't like that because you have so much distance from where you're attached to the three-point hitch and where the ball is. Um, so I really like these styles where the ball just bolts right to the, the, uh, piece opposed to one like that. So I was looking at these and thought, well, maybe I should just make one rather than wait for one to come in the mail for a week if I order it. So that's what I did. So... Let me show you guys. I went down. I went down and um, took some measurements of my three-point hitch width at where I wanted my desired um, desired width for because the three-point hitch um, can swing out and in. But so I got my dimensions of where I wanted it. So there's a couple different parts to this. You have your main beam down here at the bottom so this is where the ball will attach to the trailer so that's gonna be a three quarter inch piece of steel I'm gonna cut it at 26 and an eighth and then i'll have these ears on the side here which will be half inch plate and the pins will go through here that connect to the three point hitch and then i have to make this other piece at the top for the top link um, so that'll be down to 3 8 then these connector bars will be 3 8 as well so this cat isn't pretty um, I'm not really uh, the engineering drawing expert but this should do for what I'm doing this is just simply an aid for me whenever I'm designing something I can sit here and figure out how I'll do it and then I just take a picture on my phone and while I'm working, I can look up my dimensions on my phone. All right, let's get started making this hitch. Um, the one I'm gonna design it off of, I found online for a hundred bucks, but with the state of things right now, um, shipping and whatnot, probably won't get it for weeks, but regardless of that, um, that would kind of discount the joy of making the thing. So let's start getting the first piece three quarter inch plate up on the table so I can cut it. It's probably pretty heavy, so I'm just gonna use the crane. Um, let me look here. Okay, so um, the piece where the ball mount's gonna go, show you the CAD, um, is 26 and an eighth by three inch wide. And then I'll drill a hole um, with a mag drill for the, uh, what you call it, um, for the uh, 
Oh, man. Anyways, I this is a rough piece. It was torch cut. Um, I torch cut this back when I was making the crane through supports down this concrete, this material. Uh, see, I need 26 and an eighth. So I'm gonna use this giant thing, of course. Um, do that. Gotta take this little burr off first. Okay, hold your ears. Okay, so I'm gonna use a circular saw for this. So I'm just gonna mark it out at, let's see here. I don't want to lose a crazy bit of, crazy amount of material, but uh, yeah, it's always some. So zero and 26 and an eighth would be... there okay um, Square. Here's my plate. So, cool. All right, it's a little more lively in here now. Got some music. I, I'm filming with my phone. I uh, usually just listen to YouTube music on my phone. That's why I don't film that much um, because the radio is, uh, not that great of music, <laughs> but yeah, anyways. Mountain stage should be on soon. And that's what I like to listen to. So wait for that and just drill some holes. And there's the hole through three quarters inch. Uh, there's the hole through three quarters of an inch steel. So, um, I probably should have cut this um, before I probably should have cut this hole out before I cut the whole bar out. But because uh, that would have minimized the chatter more if it was coming from a bigger piece. But that's fine. Um, you just don't want the piece that you're drilling to be chattering and moving around. Because like I said, those annular cutters are brittle and uh, they can snap. Um, let's show you. 
I have this one that you see snapped. This is the drill press attachment for a Morse taper number two. I like it, it works good, but I tried to feed it too fast and it broke. So, yeah. Here's another heavy one. Um, this piece of half inch, uh, I'm gonna cut the three inch. I need pieces that are three inch by four inch. I need two of them. So I'm gonna cut it uh, three inch way first, then I'll cut it on the Johnson over here, cut it in half. <sighs> Okay, so this is three inch by eight inch. I'm gonna have to cut it in half for the mounts for the pins go on to the three point hitch. But uh, first I'm gonna make my marks from the ends and uh, draw it out. I have a seven eighths annular cutter. I'll do it with a hole saw and drill press. So let's get to that. That's a 7 8 um, cutter, hole saw cutter. We'll have to uh, take some calipers and see how close that is. Actually being 7 8 because these walk a lot. But what I'm doing, it's fine. They're off a tenth of an inch or whatever. But it's something like a pin for the crane. I really wanted it to be a really tight fit. I didn't want any looseness. Now I just have to cut this.
Look at them chips fly. Pretty nice cut for a 110 volt saw. But uh, yeah, took me a long time to find this guy, find this Johnson, but. Yeah, that's my uh, gimbal. But yeah, Johnson, awesome. So uh, these pieces are small, so I had to put something on the back of it to kind of hold the clamp, but. Yeah, that's a pretty nice cut. One of these plates where the holes line up um, was like 3 30 seconds of an inch higher, longer than the other. So I just butted them up with one of the pins like it'll have in it and uh, took just an angle grinder and just flattened them down. So now they're nice and uh, nice and even. All right, so <clears throat> getting back to this, ooh, getting back to this um, from last night, um, I got the draw bar piece made up. I got my two ears out of half inch, the pins, and uh, now I got to cut out the 3 8 plate. Well, that should be fun because we just had like three inches of snow last night. So I have to dig that out.
So Clay weighs probably, I first got it, it was like three something. And I've cut it just about half of it. So I bet, I bet it's a little under 200 pounds, like 180 pounds or something like that. But, uh, so you only get underneath that thing. So I cut a total length um, out of my plate. Now I'm just cutting um, two 17 inch pieces out of this bar. You know, I have uh, two equal length pieces. All right, I gotta get this plate back off the table. Um, I need to develop a system where I can store these big ones with the crane. Um, I just haven't thought of anything. It's a little bit big for what I need. What I really need to do is everything I build needs to be with the standardized uh, flat part width. So if I'm usually cutting this stuff down to three inch width or six inch width, I just get some flat bar and then I'd be just cut on the Johnson, be way easier. But uh, so I was using strap before, I was using my straps before, but these straps can get cut up in these sharp corners. So I just wrap chain around here. And as you can see, um, the chain can't slip. Chain usually can slide on steel. It can't, in this case, the way it wraps around and grabs into these corners, this chain's not going anywhere. So real quick, opposed to, um, opposed to having flat bar, this is kind of why I like having these big plates around. So like, when I made that gusset, and uh, it's kind of hard to see, I'll have to do a bigger video of the crane and how I built it, but I make like this piece, and there's more pieces up in here, and uh, these mounts, and there's a big mount up there, that's half inch, but then, uh, uh, see, like there's on my table, this piece of angle, or not angle, beam. I welded a plate up into there on the edge of it that bolts to the beam for my table. So having big pieces is really handy. They're just sometimes hard to work with when they're a certain size. I should All right, I got the piece for the top link, the three point, um, ready to go. I got these lined up. I need to make some marks where I need to weld them on. Got my other plates, but uh, so anyways, this is the first thing I'm gonna weld. First thing I'm gonna go up um, to house and eat lunch. But uh, anyway, so I got the pin in, so uh, that I know these are these holes are lined up before I weld it. Pin moves, it's in there nice. Um, you see these are spaced two inch, a piece of two inch tubing. 
clamp together. So I'll just put a tack in here, tack in here, a couple tacks. Keep this brace so it doesn't swell up or expand out. Yeah, push in or push out whenever I weld it. But I'm gonna put a bead in here and then these pieces will go in here on top of that bead and be welded be welded onto this plate and onto this plate. So it's gonna be really strong. The settings on my machine be different on yours, um, but just a 35 meg wire. Um, I put a bevel in the three quarter inch plate and cleaned off the mill scale from the half inch. You can see they lay in there pretty nice. So did both sides. Um, I did it all at once. Wanted to get as much heat as I could in there. I don't think it's going to warp. I don't think I'm, I'm going to warp that big piece of three quarter inch. And I put these braces on to make sure I don't warp the uh, half inch ears. But uh, yeah, I wanted to do it hot so I could really burn in that MIG wire. Um, and that's probably going to be definitely enough. Um, stick welding or TIG welding this could have been marginally better. That's That's my opinion. Okay, so you can see the basic idea here. I have this laid out on the table, so this is running parallel with the beam. And I ran these perpendicular marks up here. Um, brought from here, so I can fill that bevel in with weld. And then I matched up this top piece that I welded. Um, matched it up <clears throat> with my lines. And uh, so it's ready to weld. Everything's right where I want it. Um, see that holes lined up right in the center with the top. So that leaves me to put some clamps on here and start welding. Okay, I got my clamps on. Um, for this top one, I just put a piece of cut off C channel from whenever I notched these. But uh, I really love this clamp. Made in England. This has to be really old. Um, but I love them because these are nice big clamps. They have a lot of clearance. And I don't have to use uh, those vice, vice grip clamps, which are good, but not for stuff like this. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, so I did my 
preheating with the torch and I'm ready to tack this on and put some bracing on it, weld it and call it good. Put the stuff on, put the pins and the ball on. All right, so I just finished the welding on it, put another pass on all of the uh, joints here, and uh, just gotta cut these braces off now, and um, put the pins in. Yeah, I'll just put the pins in now, and uh, I mean, I could weld this backside, and I probably should, and I, yeah, I'll probably have to do that. But I mean, this is just moving my trailer around the yard, so uh, it should be fine for now. I'm gonna put the pins in and see how it, uh, how it fits. So that's where the top link will go, and then you have your other links, and then of course the trailer will go here. So that should work quite well. Okay, got the trailer on. Um, haven't hooked up the wiring yet, but this is working good. Ended up polishing these out and put some fluid film on it. Uh, finished the welds up here. Got these guys welded all in. Can adjust it. 
but it's pretty level. I like it where it's sitting. Nice and sturdy. So, yeah. Yep, it's looking good on there. Tractor doesn't even know it's back there. I'm happy with the way it rides. I haven't taken it on the highway yet, so I can only say for back roads. All right, we'll pull up this hill. 